So to add in post process, we're going to go to our modes, volumes, and post process volume. Hit game mode so we can see it. And let, similar to light mass importance volume, we want to make sure this encases our scene. I'm just going to scale it up and make sure it fits within the bounds of our level. So there, the yellow volumes are light mass importance, and the purple volume is our post process. Hit one. And to actually see the effects of post process, you want to be in game mode. So what you want to do is, if you can't find it, you can always go to your world outliner on this right side and type post, and you get post process volume. Click on that, and hit G. And now in game mode, we can see the effects of our post-process volume. The first thing we can do is we can change the white balance uh, based on the Kelvin temperature of the scene. So the default is 6,500. Now the higher the value, the brighter the scene is, is going to be, the lower the value, the colder the scene is going to be. So since this is a cold scene, a winter scene, I'm going to do my Kelvin value to starting at 5,500. And instantly you can see it got a blue punch. Right now, I'm going to change my tint of my white balance. I can add a point one. I can add a point two, and that's starting to affect the tinting of the scene. Now it's getting a little more purple, so I don't want that too much. So I'm going to just do a very small amount of tint. Is now zero point zero five. Now in the global section, the post process, we can change the saturation. This is where things get fun. It's kind of like uh, Instagram filters for your scene. You can go pretty crazy here, but uh, we'll try to keep it uh, consistent so we get a nice uh, balance of contrast and light. So we click on saturation, and on the bottom is the amount of saturation you want. The lower the value, the more desaturated your scene will be. The higher the value, the more saturation. So I do a value of like 0.2, kind of turns black and white. In fact, looks pretty cool if that's what you want for your vignette or your level or your cinematic you know, black and white feel. Boom, we got black and white. But I don't want black and white. I want a little bit of desaturation. So I'm going to go to a value of 0.8. And then I can change the color of my saturation with the color wheel. And as I move it, you can see things are changing. Counting again, like I said, Instagram filters, per se. So somewhere about. Here feels good. Again, you just kind of eyeball it and let you know the exact values you want, but I'm just you know, kind of messing around and see what feels right. You can also click on your contrast and set how high or low you want your contrast to be. So I can bump up my contrast to 1.2 or even bring it lower to 0.9. Actually, you know, 1.2 feels pretty good. 1.1. And they, again, you can play with the colors of your contrast. So something like that there looks pretty good. You get nice uh, shadows. You can also play with your gamma settings, similar way. The point, the lower the gamma, the darker the scene, the higher the gamma, the brighter the scene. So 1.2 is kind of a bit washed out, so I'm going to do like 0.9, even 1. I'm not going to mess with gamma too much, I'm going to actually turn that off. I don't want to play with it, but you can if you want to for your scene. Nothing's stopping you there. Uh, you can also change the gain. Again, lower, lower value, darker, 
higher value brighter. Turn that off, not using that for this. And you can always change the color offset. And another thing I like to do is the scene color tint. It's kind of a global color tinting. And as you use my color wheel and try to find a global color that feels right. Something like that feels pretty good. Then we can scroll down. We can, uh, you can play with your bl uh, bloom method. You can always just change the auto exposure. You know, we can turn that on. And similar to like a camera, the, lo uh, the lower the number, the darker the scene is, the higher the number, the more exposure you're gonna get. So we can bump this up to like maybe a 0.2. You can also uh, adjust your lens flares, how intense you want them if you have lens flares in your scene. You can also mess with depth of field, you know, I'll turn that on. I'll use uh, focus depth of field. You can also use Gaussian de depth of field to get that nice blur effect. And you can play with the values of your, of your Gaussian uh, depth of field. You know, whatever you feel is good for your scene. I'm going to just go back to both depth of field. And I'm going to scale it to about 2. Oh, 2 is a bit too hard. 0.2. Even 0.2 is a bit too much. 0 0.02. 0 0.05. And 0 0.03. And we can also change the, the poke size. And we can also go down and if you have pro process materials, you can hook them up in here. You can also measure ambient inclusion. I usually turn that on. Global illumination, you can have a global illumination color value. I, don't mess with that usually when I build my visual scenes, but it's the value is here for global illumination. You can do motion blur, and you can also update your screen space reflections, which we will get to. So I'm going to turn on my intensity, the quality, and roughness. Uh, a good value that Unreal says is 0.8 for your roughness. And uh, the lower the lower number, the lower the quality, higher the number, the higher the quality. But the higher the number on the quality the more performance it's going to take to build the scene. So let's just, uh, this is a small visual scene, we'll power the quality to 75%. And that's pretty much it for post. And I'm going to do just add one more thing in the back, because it's kind of dark, I'm going to add some uh, red fill light. For my, for my torches, kind of how I did up in the windows. Copy that. Edit, paste here. And I'm just gonna scale up the radius. And I'm going to do one more lighting build. And I, uh, oh, before I do a lighting build, I need to talk about screen space reflections. So we can go to our window, we can go to modes, we can go to visual effects and sphere and reflection capture. Basically, this uh, helps with the reflection of light on different surfaces. And right now, this one actor has a very big radius, but you can uh, place more around the level with sm smaller radiuses to help how you want your map and reflections to work. So I can uh, reduce the influence radius of this guy to, let's say, 1,000. Again, let's say 500. And the brightness, it changes how much reflection we're going to get off of it. So we can do like two and go to some more met metallic parts we like we have down here. And really let them shine with a reflection. So 
So we have some metallic parts in this piece here. Some metallic parts over here. And then we can bring some to our tower. And then I'm going to just hit update captures and do one more build. And I think our visual scene is complete. So at the start of this tutorial, we began with this piece of concept art. After our lighting build, after our geometry work, after our static mesh work, particle effects, and a few uh, light bakes later, we have this. Uh, it's a small visual scene. And uh, what I've shown you are the basics of how to build a level or a visual scene. And again, we kind of compare them side by side. Not too shabby. Again, there's a lot of tweaks that can be done. More lighting work, more, you know, colors and whatnot. But I just want to get the gist of uh, building a visual scene or a level to you guys. I really hope this is informative. Uh, of how to build a level from scratch and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below for any of the video sections if something didn't make sense I'll try to cover it again or explain it in the comment uh, reply uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, for more Unreal Engine videos and gaming related videos and be on your merry way to build your more uh, your own awesome visual scenes if you have anything cool you want to show me uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Mosey Designer or send me a link in the comments below and I'll check it out and see what you got. So till next time, uh, cheers and best of luck with uh, your own visual scenes.